Lord, let the meditation of my heart, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Hey guys, it's me, Attorney Brunel Donald Che. Just wanted to come to you guys today out of a scripture that I was had to meditate on this morning myself. And that scripture is James 4 and 17. We're serving up the soul food with the good news of the Bible. And the scripture today that we're going to dive into is... James chapter 4, verse 17, and it says, So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, to him it is sin. Whew! I tell you, when I read that, I was like, Jesus there have been so many things man I tell you that I knew that I was supposed to do but then you start making the excuses you start reasoning it away you start analyzing situations you know like being honest all the time about things right just say like say like I know people who are receiving unemployment and they're struggling and unemployment says, hey, you can't make more than $50 a week or you will, you know, that's family in the background. You you only can make $50 a week and then you make, say you make that week $200 that week. But you don't know how the next week is going to go, right? And so you decide, okay. Mm, that's the family. I got to let them have their way. So you make 200 that week. And you say, you know what? But God, it's not really stealing. Because I really don't know what I'm going to make the next week. So I'm just going to put down that I made $49.99. It's not going to hurt anybody. Nobody knows. But God knows. It's stealing. That's what it is. It's just like you meet an amazing, wonderful guy. He's so fine. He's so this. He chocolate. I like chocolate. He sold chocolate. He just got the most beautiful wavy hair. Best conversation. He's charming. He's sweet. He's, he says he loves the Lord. He's married. And you go out on a date with him. And the one thing leads to another. And you say, oh. He told me he was going to divorce her. So really technically... He's not really married. All this chocolate can be mine. Wrong. He's married. He is not divorced. He took a vow before God and man and some pl you know, to love, honor, and cherish and be with his wife until death do them part. So if you sleep with that married man, if he sleeps with you, it's called adultery for him. It's called fornication for you. And it's all the product of the sin lust well my husband told me not to buy this particular product online but you know that's my account I can do what I want we're married he has his account I'll do what I want even though the money belongs to the marriage and you buy that particular thing that your husband told you not to buy that sin because your husband has already told you. And I'm guilty of not the lust or anything. But, you know, but I'm not perfect. I have situations where my husband has said, oh, you're not going to buy this or buy that. And I'm like, mm, 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 mm. no, I'm going to buy that. And I am going to get that. And, I, and guess what? Every time I have done something that my husband said I shouldn't do, I ended up paying for it. I end up regretting it. And so this scripture really, 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 really dug in. You know, like. Let's just say, politically, there were things, politically things that I got involved in. And everybody was telling me, no, don't do it, don't do it. That, you know, you're on track to become a judge or you're on track to 
to um, do great things, Brunel. People listen to you. People talk to you. But when God sends the call, when he sends you to go and do something, it may go against the grain of every single thing that people are telling you, but you have to do what God told you because you don't know the end result about what, how God is going to use that thing. And for me, if I don't do what God tells me to do, even if it's against everything that people tell me, it's a sin because the right thing is to follow God, not people. And the Lord that brought me to that thing or that caused me to do or say or, or act in the way that I did. He's the same God that's going to cover me. He's the same God that's going to protect me. He's the same God that's going to make a way out of nowhere like he did for my husband, children. I, and y'all know what I'm talking about. He made a way out of nowhere. So this scripture was very personal to me. Um, there are things in my life that if I didn't do the right thing, like my sister, let's go back to this one. My sister was in a group home while I was in college. I had come out of a group home to college. And my sister was in a group home while I was in, I want to say my junior, senior year of college. And she was 13 years old in that group home and she tried to commit suicide. And, you know, there are people, you know, you talk to and they were like, don't get her. She is a problem. You're in college. You're about to graduate. You don't have time for that. You don't need to do that. Leave her there. Those people know how to know. No, I'm not going to leave my sister nowhere. My sister tried to commit suicide. Do you understand that I have to go get my sister? This education and all I'm running around doing is to be a good example for my sister. I'm not perfect. But for me to leave my sister in a group home, and yeah, I, I was working, I think, at Walmart or whatever as in college. I had my student loans and, and stuff like that, but I got in the car with the, the guy that I was with at the time, fornicating. Yes, I was fornicating like a mug, fornicating with, and was also my fiance, but I was, you know, fornicating with him. And I drove to that group home. And pack my sister up and grab my sister up out of there. And it wasn't easy. We struggled. We had days we didn't have all we should have or things or whatever. But, you know, I went and got a link card. At the time, it was food stamps or whatever. But I went and got that. And I took care of my sister. I was in school. My sister would put her in school. And my sister is alive today. She's 38 years old, not trying to commit suicide with her own children now. Um, but what I'm just saying, you people will tell you, don't do that. That's going to stop your career. Don't do that. That's going to stop you from getting where you got to go. Or don't say that because that may offend somebody. But if it's the word of God and I'm speaking it in love and I'm coming across in love, if they're offended, that's something with their heart. That's something that they need to work on. That's not something that I need to be sad about or worry about because I spoke to you in a Christian manner, in a godly manner, and I told you about what thus saith the Lord. Now, there are people that will get on me and they say, oh, Brunel, like my son, I was like, uh, my oldest boy was telling me, you know, well, mom, I'm going to start calling boys. I'm not going to say they're boys or guys. I'm going to say they're a them or some you know it's something or or i'm not gonna say that girls are girls i'm 